Thank you for taking the time to listen to this presentation that will cover basic medical insurance terms and concepts. We will also be going into some detail about your medical plan options available to you through the State Health Benefit Plan, also known as SHBP. By taking the time to understand the basics, you'll be in a much better position to choose the medical plan that meets your budget and the needs for you and your family. Let's explore the basic components of what makes up a medical insurance plan. We will go over copays, deductibles, coinsurance, and out-of-pocket maximums. Once you understand these concepts, you will be better able to understand what plan options are best for you and your family. A copay is a fixed amount that you pay for a covered healthcare service. Some common copay examples might include $35 to see your primary care physician, $45 to see a specialist provider like a cardiologist, $20 for a generic prescription. Once the copay is paid, the insurance company handles the remainder of the covered medical expenses. Let's look at an example. Joe went to his regular internal medicine doctor and total cost of visit was $204. However, Joe's medical plan has a $35 copay to see a primary care physician. Therefore, Joe only owes his doctor's office $35 and the insurance company pays the remaining $169 directly to the physician's office. What is a deductible and why do I sometimes still owe money even after I've satisfied my deductible responsibility? A deductible is the amount you owe for a covered health service before your health insurance plan will begin to pay. A deductible may not apply to all services. For example, if you have a plan that has co-payments for services like doctor office visits or prescription drugs, your deductible may not apply. With certain plans, sometimes you'll have to first meet your deductible, then co-pays will apply once your deductible has been satisfied. Common services that trigger your deductible include hospitalization, lab work, diagnostic testing such as x-rays and scans, office visits and or prescription drugs depending on the type of plan you have. Let's look at an example. Rachel has an upcoming minor outpatient surgery and she knows that that cost will be a total of $5,000. The deductible on Rachel's health plan is $1,500. On the day of the surgery, Rachel pays the outpatient surgical facility $1,500, which satisfies her deductible responsibility. Rachel is also responsible for paying 20% of what is left after she satisfies her deductible. This is because Rachel's plan has 20% coinsurance, which we will explore. Rachel is billed for the remaining responsibility of $700 after her surgery. Rachel's overall out-of-pocket responsibility for a $5,000 surgery is $2,200 in this example. What is coinsurance? Coinsurance is an insured individual's share of the cost of a covered medical expense. Coinsurance is expressed as a percentage. For example, let's say the plan pays 70, that means you pay 30. The plan pays 80, you pay 20. The plan pays 90%, you pay 10%. Let's look at another example. Marcy has surgery in January of 2024, costing $35,000. Marcy's health plan has a deductible of $3,500, so she will be responsible for paying her entire deductible. Marcy is also responsible for paying 20% of what is left after her deductible, since in this example, Marcy's health plan has 80% coinsurance. Marcy pays 20, the insurance company pays 80 after the deductible is satisfied. The plan also has an out-of-pocket maximum of $8,150. So even though 20% of the remaining cost for surgery after the deductible is $6,300, Marcy will only be responsible for paying a total of $8,150 for the $35,000 surgery. What is an out-of-pocket maximum? 
Out-of-pocket maximums are the highest amount of money you'll be responsible for paying each year for covered medical expenses. Think of this as your worst case scenario for the year. Even if you have a $1 million claim, you will only have to pay your annual out-of-pocket maximum. If you reach your out-of-pocket maximum during the year, the insurance company will cover 100% of your medical costs in network for the remainder of that calendar year. Any out-of-pocket expenses you incur for a covered service goes towards the out-of-pocket maximum, co-pays, deductibles, and co-insurance. Let's look at another example. Jonathan has a chronic condition that means he must take an expensive prescription drug each month. Jonathan also had to undergo some diagnostic testing and a surgical procedure this past year. Between Jonathan's prescriptions, lab work, doctor visits, and his brief stay in the hospital, he has already paid $10,000 towards his medical expenses for the year by October 1st. Jonathan has a second surgery in November. Jonathan will owe $0 for this surgery because he has already reached the plan's $10,000 out-of-pocket maximum. Once you reach your out-of-pocket maximum for any given calendar year, the insurance company will pay 100% of covered in-network services, including prescription drugs. There are a lot of acronyms in healthcare, HMO, POS, PPO, HDHP. What does it all mean? We will explore the different types of health plans so you can have a better grasp of the key differences. It is important to note that since the inception of the Affordable Care Act, Standard preventive services are covered at 100%. Need a physical exam? It is free. If you see your regular doctor for a normal routine physical and a health concern comes up during that visit, that is perfectly okay. However, just be aware that any additional testing or blood work done during your preventive visit that your doctor's office does not code as preventive may carry an out-of-pocket cost with it. First, we'll discuss what an HMO or health maintenance organization plan is. With HMO plans, there is no out-of-network coverage. If your health plan is an HMO and you want insurance to help pay for covered services, you will need to use an in-network physician. When the concept of HMOs came out, the networks were very small and more limiting. However, that is no longer the case. Many HMO networks are very large now and can be a great option for you and your family, especially since many HMO plans can help keep your costs lower. Some HMO plans require you to assign a primary care physician or PCP and get a referral from that doctor to see a specialist doctor. This is sometimes called a closed or gated HMO. Open access HMO plans, which are now more common, do not require a PCP referral to specialists. However, it is always a good idea to designate a PCP so that doctor can understand and help drive your overall health care. Even if not required by your plan, you may still want to ask your PCP for referrals to specialist doctors. They often have great relationships with very reputable specialists. These physicians can work together to make sure your overall health is properly addressed. If you cover a spouse and or children on your plan, each family member can designate a different PCP. For example, your child will need a pediatrician, while you may want to designate an internal medicine physician. The healthcare plan type we'll discuss next is a point of service or POS plan. POS plans are like HMO plans. The difference is that you have the option to go to out-of-network providers. Typically, you will pay significantly more out-of-pocket to see an out-of-network provider. If you have a point-of-service plan, it will be in your best interest financially to do your best to stay with in-network providers. Some POS plans may still require you to designate a PCP, but it is much less common of a requirement. If you aren't sure if your plan requires PCP designation, call the member services number on the back of your medical insurance ID card and ask. Asking these important questions always helps to avoid any potential 
claim rejections, or unexpected out-of-pocket costs. PPO, or Preferred Provider Organization Plans, typically have a very large network of providers. If you have a PPO plan, you will not be required to designate a primary care physician, and you are never required to receive a referral to see a specialist provider. Keep in mind it is still always a great idea to develop a relationship with a primary care physician even when you're not required to formally assign one. Like with POS plans, you have an out-of-network benefit on a PPO plan. Out-of-network benefits are almost always significantly less rich than your in-network benefit. So it's still best financially to remain in-network when you can. Lots of variables aside from network go into the pricing of a health plan, so this may not always be the case, but oftentimes PPO plans have a higher monthly premium than other plan types. Here is a plan type comparison chart so you can see the difference in the plans laid out in this way. Take a quick moment to look at this chart. Let's explore a plan type called a High Deductible Health Plan, or HDHP. HDHPs are also sometimes called CDHPs, or Consumer Driven Health Care Plans. Just because you have a medical plan with what you might consider to be a high deductible does not mean that you're on an HDHP. To be considered a true HDHP, there are certain plan attributes that must exist. For example, on HDHPs, the cost of all covered services first go towards your deductible. Let's say you are on an HDHP and you just signed up for it. The deductible on the plan is $3,500 for an individual in this example. You go to your internal medicine doctor because you aren't feeling well and think maybe you have the flu. The total cost of your visit with your insurance is $247. You will be charged $247 since you did not yet meet your $3,500 deductible responsibility. Some HDHPs have copays, but the copays will only apply after you have satisfied your plan's deductible. Using the same $3,500 deductible plan as an example, let's say you have met your $3,500 deductible for the year, and you go to the doctor for that same flu test. Your plan has a $35 PCP copay that applies after you reach your deductible. Since you met your deductible in this example, you'll be charged $35 for the visit. If you reach your plan's out-of-pocket maximum for a given calendar year, you will not even be charged copays for the remainder of the year, and insurance will cover 100% of covered services, including prescription drugs. Another key component of an HDHP is that they are compatible with health savings accounts, or HSAs, which we will explore next. With consumer-driven plans like HSAs, for example, there are different types of accounts that can be associated with the plans. Two common accounts that you'll hear about as it relates to your healthcare options are HSAs, or health savings accounts, and HRAs, health reimbursement arrangements. Even though you may hear your plan referred to as an HSA plan, the medical plan is not actually an HSA. Rather, when a medical plan is referred to as an HSA plan, what that means is that the medical plan is a high deductible health plan that is compatible with a health savings account. An HSA is a bank account, not a health plan. An HSA is a type of savings account that allows you to set aside money on a pretext basis to pay for qualified expenses. The money in your account can be used to pay for qualified expenses that are beyond just medical. You can use the account to pay for out-of-pocket vision and dental expenses as well. In fact, anything that you can use a flexible spending account or FSA for, you can use your HSA for. You're likely familiar with FSAs or flexible spending accounts. An FSA is like an HSA, but there are some key differences. The concept of allowing you to put aside pre-tax dollars to pay for eligible out-of-pocket expenses, however, is the same. For the purposes of this presentation, we will focus on accounts that are compatible with medical insurance. You can elect to participate in an FSA regardless of your medical plan participation, 
assuming your employer offers an FSA plan. If you aren't sure and you want to know more, ask your HR department. Who is eligible to establish and contribute towards an HSA? If you are enrolled in a high deductible health plan, you are eligible to establish a health savings account. However, there is an exception. If you are enrolled in Medicare, you can no longer newly establish or contribute to an HSA. How much can I contribute towards my HSA? You may contribute a maximum of $4,150 for an individual or $8,300 per year for a family. This is for the 2024 calendar year. If you are 55 years or older, you can contribute an additional $1,000 to your HSA on an annual basis. Just remember, if you are age 65 and enrolled in Medicare, you can no longer contribute towards an HSA. However, if you have one established with funds in it, you can continue to spend the funds on qualified expenses. What expenses are covered? You can use your HSA to pay for many eligible medical, dental, and vision expenses. Some examples include prescriptions, doctor visits, surgery, glasses, and dental work. If you're curious about the types of over-the-counter products that you can purchase with an HSA, go to the website www.hsastore.com. Everything on that website is HSA eligible and you can use your HSA debit card to make purchases right there on the website from the comfort of your own home. You own your HSA. Think of it like a personal bank account that you use for healthcare related expenses. Unlike an FSA, unused funds roll over and build up from year to year. There is no use it or lose it rule with an HSA like there is with an FSA. You don't need to feel obligated to spend the funds in the account if it isn't necessary. It's a great idea to save up and build a nice fund for you to use for healthcare expenses into your retirement years. Most HSAs also have an investment component once you have reached a certain balance in your account. The other big benefit of an HSA is that you reduce your annual taxable income by the amount of money that you deposit into your HSA for the calendar year. Let's move on to health reimbursement arrangements or HRAs for short. Like with HSAs, you may sometimes hear health plans referred to as HRA plans. This simply means that the health plan has an HRA arrangement that is attached to the plan. It does not mean that your actual medical plan is an HRA. An HRA is an account typically funded by your employer and the employer owns the account. However, when you have insurance through the state, the HRA is likely to be funded and owned by the state health plan. The purpose of the funds in your HRA is to help pay for qualified medical expenses such as deductibles and co-payments. The funds in the HRA are often accessible on a debit card that is mailed to your home address. However, if the insurance company, like Anthem, for example, is also the administrator for your HRA, a debit card may not even be necessary. This is because the claim is automatically reimbursed through the HRA via the insurance company's technology versus you having to swipe a debit card. For example, let's say you have Anthem for your medical plan and Anthem administers your HRA. The HRA plan document states that the HRA will pay the first $500 of your deductible and you have a claim that hits $700 of your deductible. You will only be charged $200 out of pocket because the HRA is automatically kicking in behind the scenes to pay that first $500. On the flip side, if you have Anthem for your medical and a third party administers the HRA, they likely mailed you a debit card and you would actually be charged the full $700 from your provider's office or facility. You could then swipe the money on your HRA debit card to pay for the first $500 of that $700 charge. 
Either way, you are only out of pocket $200 for a $700 expense in this example. Sometimes employers will use wellness incentives as an opportunity to earn additional HRA dollars. For example, if you participate in biometric screenings, health coaching, wellness challenges, preventive screening exams, etc., you could earn more money in your HRA. You may not need to use all of your HRA dollars each year, and that is okay. Sometimes unused dollars are forfeited, and sometimes unused dollars or a portion of the unused dollars can roll over from year to year. Next, we'll dive into the health plan options that are available to you through Anthem. You have four different plan options offered through the state health benefit plan through Anthem. The available plans are gold HRA, silver HRA, bronze HRA, and lastly, the HMO plan option. Remember, when you see a health plan referred to as an HRA, that does not mean the medical plan itself is an HRA. It just means that you have an HRA benefit attached to that plan if you choose one of those options. The only option that does not include an HRA benefit is the HMO plan option. This chart may look like a lot of information to digest, but don't worry. It's not that difficult to interpret once you understand what you're looking for, and we will be going over each important plan attribute so that you understand the difference between all four options. The four different plan options that are available within Anthem are listed across the top of the chart. Along the left-hand side of the chart is where the plan attributes will be listed. Let's look at the first section of the chart, which covers the deductibles for each plan option. You can see that the deductible responsibility increases based on who you cover on your plan. Obviously, if you're covering a spouse and children, your deductible responsibility will be greater than if you were to just cover yourself. Please note that the HMO option at the far right-hand side of this chart has the lowest deductible responsibility. If you're looking for richer benefits, the HMO option might be right for you. Just remember that with HMO plans, you must stay in network if you want insurance to pay anything towards a covered service. The HMO option is an open access plan. As you may recall from earlier in this presentation, open access just means that you do not have to obtain referrals from a primary care physician before you seek in care from an in-network specialist. The deductibles on the HRA plan options increase as the metal level changes. Gold will have the richest benefits and therefore a lower deductible than the silver or bronze option. The bronze option will have the least rich benefits. The bronze option will also be the lowest cost option. This is perfect for people who do not often have many healthcare expenses and may just want to focus more on saving money in their paycheck. As you can imagine, the richer the benefits, the more you will pay out of your paycheck for the plan. Now let's take a look at the coinsurance section of the chart. If you can remember, coinsurance is just referring to the percentage of the cost of a covered benefit you will pay after you meet your deductible. Looking at the gold HRA as an example, if you have employee only coverage on the gold plan, and you incur a claim of $5,000, you'll first pay your $1,500 deductible. Then you will be charged 15% of the remaining $3,500, which is $525. Anthem will cover the other 85% of this claim. The total you'll owe on the $5,000 claim in this example is $2,025. The next section of the chart lists all of the out-of-pocket maximums for each plan option. And if you really think about it, this attribute is the most critical one in determining overall value of the plan. Why is this, you may ask? Remember that your out-of-pocket maximum is simply just like your worst case scenario for a given calendar year in terms of the cost of the claims you incur. 
Pretend you incur a $6 million claim. The most that you would pay out of pocket is the out of pocket maximum listed on your plan summary. The lower your out of pocket maximum is, the richer your plan is. Once again, you can see that the gold plan has the lowest out of pocket maximum and the bronze plan has the highest. Please note that the HMO plan has its out of pocket maximum that matches the gold HRA plan. The next section of the chart is how hospitalization, emergency care, regular doctor office visits, and specialist visits will be covered. For all of the HRA plan options, everything goes towards your deductible unless it is considered routine preventive care. Remember, routine preventive care is covered at 100% on all plan options. The biggest difference between the plan options is with the HMO plan and how these types of services are covered. As you can see on the HMO plan option, you'll be charged a flat copay amount for all of the services unless it is hospitalization. If you go to the hospital, that will go towards your deductible. This is very attractive to many people because it is much easier to budget and predict costs. Your out-of-pocket costs tend to remain lower with an HMO plan compared to other types because of these office visit and emergency care copays. The last section of the chart displays how each plan will cover prescription drugs. With the HRA plan options, you'll be charged a percentage of the cost of the drug up to a dollar maximum. Prescription drug benefits are typically designed in tiers. Tier one drugs are frequently generic drugs. Many of these tier one drugs are very inexpensive and you may only be charged a few dollars. If you look at the HMO plan, you'll see that for tier one drugs, you have a $20 copay. If the cost of the drug is less than $20, you'll be charged the lower amount. On the HRA options, you will pay 15% of the cost of the drug and no more than $50 for a tier one prescription. It will be very rare to be charged $50 for a tier one drug. Tier two, two drugs are often brand name drugs and they are more expensive than tier one drugs. Therefore, you will be charged more for a tier two drug. On the HMO plan, you will have a $50 copay and on the HRA plan options, you'll pay 25%, but never more than $80 per tier two prescription. Finally, there are the most expensive drugs, which is the tier three. These drugs may include specialty and injectable drugs. On the HMO plan, there is a charge of $90 for a tier three drug. On the HRA plan options, you'll be charged 25% up to $125 maximum per prescription. If you get a new prescription from a provider during the year and you go to fill the prescription and you feel that it's not affordable, you have options. We will go into more detail about what your options are, but please know that you can always call your prescribing doctor and let them know that the new prescription is really expensive. Ask if there's an alternative because many times there is a less expensive alternative that can work just as well. Certain medications that you take on a regular ongoing basis are available in a 90 day supply. Now that we've gone over the basics of how the Anthem medical plan options work, we can talk more about the HRA benefits on the HRA plan options. Remember, there is no HRA attached to the HMO plan option. To help reduce your deductible responsibility, the SHBP provides you with HRA base credits at the beginning of the plan year. The tables on this page are representative of each HRA plan options, gold, silver, and bronze. The gold plan is going to have the richest HRA benefit of $400 for an individual, $600 if you cover your spouse or child or children, and $800 if you cover your spouse and your child or children. 
You can see the boxes on the far right of each table represent your deductible responsibility after the HRA credits are applied. Take a moment to look at this chart so you can understand what your ultimate deductible responsibility is after the HRA credits are applied on each plan and tier of coverage option. In addition to Anthem, you have some plan options available to you offered through United Healthcare. There are two plan options offered through the SHBP by United Healthcare for eligible members, including pre-65 retirees. There is an HMO option and a high deductible health plan or HDHP option. Here we have another chart to display more details about the two plan options you have with United Healthcare. Just like with Anthem, you can see that the HMO option is open access. Again, all that means is that you don't need to get a referral from a primary care physician to see an in-network specialist. On the HMO option, you have office visit copays, so not everything is going towards your deductible. When you visit your regular doctor, you'll pay a $35 copay. If you see a specialist like a cardiologist or a psychiatrist, for example, you will pay $45 copay. You also have a copay when you go to the urgent care facility or emergency room. Keep in mind that you should only resort going to the emergency room if you are experiencing a true emergency. On the HMO plan, if you go to the hospital, that will go towards your deductible and coinsurance until you reach your annual out-of-pocket maximum of $4,000 for an individual or more if you're covering dependents on the plan. After you reach your out-of-pocket maximum, United Healthcare will pay 100% of your covered in-network care for the remainder of the calendar year. For prescription drug coverage, on the HMO plan, you'll also have copays. The copays will vary again based on what tier your prescription drug falls into. Remember that tier one is often generic drugs, tier two is often preferred brand name drugs, and tier three is typically non-preferred or more expensive brand name or specialty medications. You also have an option to get certain medications via mail order in a 90-day supply. Please remember that if your doctor prescribes you a drug that does not seem affordable, ask questions. Let your provider know that your new prescription is expensive and see if there's an alternative. The High Deductible Health Plan or HDHP option with United Healthcare allows you to establish a health savings account with either Optum Bank or another bank of your choice. With the HDHP option, all covered services will go towards your deductible and coinsurance until you meet your out-of-pocket maximum for the year. This option is great for individuals looking to save money in their paycheck because this plan is less expensive than all of the other plan options that are available to you through the SHBP. Also, the health savings account is another perk on this particular plan option. I bet you're wondering about what each of these plan options we just went over cost. Take a look at this page to see your monthly cost by plan and tier of coverage. If you're covering children on your plan, the cost is the same no matter how many children you're covering. When you go to make your elections online with ADP, you will see the costs listed very clearly on the ADP portal as well. The costs are listed by most expensive plan to least expensive plan. The Georgia State Health Benefit Plan offers some great wellness benefits for you and your covered dependents. Let's explore what those are. All Anthem and United Healthcare medical plan options come with wellness incentives. 
please note that the wellness incentives only apply to you and your spouse if your spouse is covered on your medical plan. Wellness incentives do not apply to children. The maximum number of wellness incentive points you can earn is 960. That's a, that's a maximum of 480 points for you and 480 points for your covered spouse. If you do not cover a spouse on your medical plan, your maximum number of wellness incentive points for the 2024 calendar year is 480. What can these points be used for? You can get a $100 Visa prepaid card for 480 points, or you can use your credits to apply them towards eligible medical and pharmacy expenses in increments of 120. Anthem and United Healthcare do not automatically receive information about your earned points. Therefore, you must go to www.bewellshbp.com and indicate how you want to redeem your individually earned points through the Share Care Redemption Center. Activities must be completed and all documentation received between January 1st, 2024 and December 2nd of 2024 to earn points in the 2024 calendar year. We talked about the wellness incentive point earning potential, but how do you earn these points? There are multiple different ways to earn points, from online wellness tests to challenges to getting your annual preventive wellness exams. For more details about what you can do to earn points, go to bewellshbp.com. Okay, so you don't feel well, or you suspect something may be off with your health and you wanna go get checked out by a doctor. But where do you go? What if you need immediate assistance, but your illness or injury isn't life-threatening? There are multiple options when you or a family member needs immediate medical assistance. Unless you believe your situation is life-threatening, try the most convenient and least expensive option first. If you are covered under the SHBP, you have access to telemedicine benefits. With Anthem, with Anthem you can use Live Health Online. 15%, 20%, and 25% coinsurance applies on HRA plans, and this is not subject to the deductible. There is a $35 copay on the HMO plan option. With United Healthcare, you can use virtual visits. Your cost for a virtual visit is 30% after the deductible on the high deductible health plan option and a $35 copay on the HMO option. Both Anthem and United Healthcare have a 24-hour nurse line as well. So you can just ask questions of a nurse. You can call the nurse 24 hours a day, seven days a week. The phone numbers for the nurse lines are listed here, but you can always call the member services number on the back of your medical ID card and be directed to the nurse line that way. Take a look at the chart on the right hand side of the screen. Here, you'll see a simple breakdown of what your options are by type of illness. For example, don't go to the emergency room and pay a ton just because you have the sniffles. Instead, try telemedicine first. Anthem and United Healthcare have online in-network provider search tools. Another great way to check to see if your doctor is in network is to call the doctor's office and simply inquire when you go to make an appointment. The doctor's office staff will likely need some information from your medical ID card, so be sure to have it handy when you call for an appointment. Once you have chosen a plan, you're all set. Many people do not realize that they can get some additional perks just for being an Anthem member or United Healthcare member. On these last few slides, we'll review some programs 
embedded in your medical plan and some things to know outside of your insurance plan that may help you keep costs down. It is no secret that healthcare costs, especially the cost of prescription drugs, continue to rise. Earlier in this presentation, it was mentioned that if you go to fill a new prescription drug and you're being charged more than you're comfortable with, that does not mean that you don't have options. First, you could try calling the prescribing physician to see if there is an alternative drug. However, before you even do that, you might wanna try looking at a program like GoodRx or another discount drug program to see if your prescription would be covered differently if you use one of these outside discount programs versus your regular medical insurance. Investigate a prescription drug program and find out if you can save money before paying for an expensive prescription. GoodRx is probably the most popular drug discount program. It is easy to use and you don't have to sign up for an official membership. Simply go to www.goodrx.com, enter the medication in the appropriate field, and GoodRx will show you a list of pharmacies in your area and the price will be charged for the prescription that you entered. If the price is right, when you go to fill up and pick your prescription, tell the pharmacy that you want to use GoodRx instead of your insurance plan. They will know what to do. Another option is Amazon Rx Pass. You must be an Amazon Prime member to use this program. To participate, Amazon will add $5 per month to your existing Amazon Prime membership fee. Medications are delivered to you for free. Walmart is always another good pharmacy to try for discounts. Walmart offers some of the most common generic drugs at a 30-day supply for only $4. If you choose to enroll in one of the Anthem Medical Plan offerings through the State Health Plan, you will have access to several programs that are helpful, especially if you have an existing chronic condition or if you've been newly diagnosed with something recently and need help navigating everything. As you can see on this screen, each program has a specific phone number, but try not to focus too much on different phone numbers or names of programs. The important thing to know is that you have these resources available to help you. Many people don't even think to call the member services phone number on the back of their medical plan ID card for this type of help, but you should always ask what programs are available to help you when you need it. Please note that the Building Healthy Families program is perfect for new parents. As we all know, that journey can be as stressful and overwhelming as it is rewarding. Take advantage of this help if you're a new parent enrolled in an Anthem plan. Also important to know is that the Disease Management Pharmacy Coinsurance Waiver Program can help to get the cost of certain prescriptions waived. If you have diabetes, coronary artery disease, or asthma, find out more about this program. Thank you for your attention to this presentation. We hope it was helpful. On this slide, you will see the website and phone number for the State Health Benefit Plan of Georgia. Thank you for all you do.